Salut people from all around the world! I'm Ellie and I live in France and today I have some really cool books I would love to share with you. A few years ago I hated reading until I started buying books that I actually enjoyed. Not for the sake of looking smart and reading only psychological books or self-development. When I started reading romantic and easy reads, I started to develop a passion for reading. So today I have a few of them in three different categories, so thrillers, romantic and non-fiction slash personal development. Those I will share with you today are for me la crème de la crème as we say it in France. Uh, I have read many other books but they did not deserve a five star review. Those are for me the five star books I have read in the past months or maybe two years that are awesome for this time of the year where you only want something easy to read and yeah. So let's get started with thrillers. Before I start with fiction, I just want to say that I used to hate reading. I only read the mandatory books for school, for high school and for college. I developed a passion for reading about two years ago when I said, fuck it, let me just pick a book that sounds good, that has no nothing to do with learning new information or, or think that will make me more smart, just reading a book for pleasure. So I went to a local French library, which is called Levnac. I picked a book that looked good, that the cover was amazing. It was a romantic book and I devoured it. And I was like, wow, in fact, I don't think I hate reading. I just think that I was not reading the things that made me happy. And I also thought that I hated thrillers until I read one of the two I'm gonna show you. And now I have read two thrillers and I absolutely love it. And I'm gonna share with you my two favorites. The first one, it is, ah, oh, I love it so much. And I think you will too. It is The Housemaid in French. It's called La Femme de Ménage. It's by Frida McFadden. She has wrote several books. This is the only one I have read from her so far. I devoured it. Um, I have the little summary here, I'm gonna share it with you if you're interested. So every day I clean the Winchester's beautiful house, top to bottom. I collect their daughter from school and I cook a delicious meal for the whole family before heading up to eat alone in my tiny room on the top floor. I try to ignore how Nina makes a mess just to watch me clean it up how she tells strange lies about her own daughter and how her husband Andrew seems more broken every day. But as long as I look into Andrew's handsome brown eyes, um, so full of pain, it's hard to imagine what it would be like to live Nina's life. The walk-in closet, the fancy car, the perfect husband. I only try on one of Nina's pristine white dresses once, just to see what it's like. But she soon finds out, and by the time I realize my attic bedroom door only locks from the outside, it's far too late. This book, amazing. Uh, in France, they sell them in like smaller versions. It's called a uh, livre de poche, so they're cheaper. I don't know if there is only one format to this book. Uh, if you're purchasing it in English, because I have read it in French, but uh, mine was 8 euros and 60 cents, really affordable, and the story was amazing. I highly recommend. And then the second thriller, uh, actually, I was really happy to read it because Brooke Michio is it's a YouTuber I follow on, um, on the platform. She recommends books really often because she reads a lot, and she said, like, if you have never read a thriller or anything, she recommends this one. So I bought it. That was my first thriller I ever read. And let me tell you, it is so good. It's called The Last Mrs. Parrish. And again, I devoured it. Uh, so this story is about Amber Patterson is tired of being a nobody, an invisible woman who melts into the background. She deserves more. She deserves a life of wealth, luxury and leisure. Daphne Parrish is the golden girl of Bishop's Harbor. Connecticut. With her model looks, her picture-perfect mansion and her millionaire husband, Jackson, she has everything Amber wants. Amber's envy could eat her alive if she didn't have a plan. Before long, she has become Daphne's closest friend and is catching the eye of Jackson. But a skeleton from her past could destroy everything and if discovered, Amber's well-laid plan may end in disaster. Really good book. I also have other books that I have read that I liked 
but not as much as those that I have decided to share. I really want you to have an amazing read for the summer. It doesn't matter if you pick one book out of all of those I will show you or all of them. I just want you to enjoy your read. Uh, so I decided to just put the best of the best, la crème de la crème as we call it in France. At least for me, those were amazing. Maybe you might not like them, but I hope you will. So those were my two thrillers. I'm gonna link them down in the down bar, that way you can directly purchase them on Amazon um, or other platforms. Now let's go on to romantic. I love romantic books. So I have six romantic books to share with you. Let's start with the last one I read and that I loved. Last year I think everyone was talking about this book. It's called People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. Uh, I read it in Slovak because that's my second <laughs> native language, but I will put it in English in the down bar. Uh, this one, I read it in less than a week because I read every morning for about an hour to an hour and a half. So I read it in, in probably a week, less than a week for sure. Uh, that one was flipping amazing. Okay, this is the story. Two best friends, 10 summer trips, one last chance to fall in love. Poppy and Alex, Alex and Poppy. They have nothing in common. She's a wild child, she wears khakis, she has insatiable wanderlust. He prefers to stay home with a book. And somehow, ever since a fateful car share from home in college many years ago, they are the very best friends. For most of the year, they live far apart. She's in New York and he's in their small hometown. But every summer for a decade, they have taken one glorious week of vacation together. Until two years ago, when they ruined everything. They haven't spoken ever since. Poppy has everything she can want, but she's stuck in a rut. When someone asks her when was the last time she was truly happy, she knows, without a doubt, it was on that ill-fated final trip with Alex. And so she decides to convince her best friend to take one more vacation together. Lay everything on the table, make it all right. Miraculously, he agrees. Basically, I'm not gonna read the rest because it's a bit longer summary, but it was amazing. Uh, highly recommend. And I think I, I should stop saying it was amazing because all of them were amazing. Uh, I'm just gonna shut up and share them with you. The second one, this one I read it in English, is called The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren. This one I devoured it also in like two or three days. That was a fabulous read. For two sworn enemies, anything can happen during the Hawaiian trip of a lifetime. Olive is always unlucky. Her identical twin sister, Amy, on the other hand, is probably the luckiest person in the world. While she is about to marry her dream man, Olive is forced to play nice with her nemesis, the best man, Ethan. Yet Olive's luck may be on the turn. When the entire wedding party, except for Olive and Ethan, gets food poisoning, there is an all-expenses-paid honeymoon and Hawaii trip to grab. Putting their mutual hatred aside, Olive and Ethan head for paradise. But when Olive runs into her future boss, the little white lie she tells him spirals out of control. First to play loving newlyweds, she and Ethan find themselves in closer proximity than they ever expected. Blah blah blah. Five stars out of five. Now, this was my first book from Ellen Hildebrand. It was a little bit harder for me to get into because I'm not a English native speaker. It was the first time I read a book that was written this way in English, but I really enjoyed it. It was just a little bit more hard for me to get into the book but that's the only thing. But it was still a five, five out of five and I would love to read more of her books. Uh, let me know if you have read other books from Ellen Hildebrand and if you have a specific recommendation. Um, I have heard that Hotel Nantucket is really good. So if you have a precise name, put it in the, in the down bar in the comment section, I would love to know. This one, the story is about Hollis Shaw. So Hollis Shaw's life seems picture perfect. She is the creator of a popular food blog with a dreamy herd sergeant husband, Matthew, and a gorgeous daughter. But when Matthew is killed in a car accident, the cracks in Hollis's life begin to show. When she discovers the idea of the Five Star Weekend, a gathering of the best friends from each stage of life, it sounds like the ideal opportunity to put herself back 
together. But a Nantucket stay with a four very different women, each facing their own crisis, might not be the idyllic escape she imagines. As personalities clash, secrets are revealed, and all emotions are rekindled, Hollis realizes that this weekend will change everything. It is quite a big book compared to the other ones, but yeah, really good. The following three books I will share are super small, and they are faster to read than the others. At least for me, they were. Beautiful Bastard by Christine Lauren. Weep, smart, hardworking, on her way to an MBA, Chloe Mills has only one problem, her boss, Bennett Ryan. He's exacting, blunt, and considerate, and completely irresistible. A beautiful bastard. Bennett has returned to Chicago from France to take a vital role in his family's massive media business. He never expected that the assistant who's been what? He never expected that the assistant who'd been helping him from abroad was the gorgeous, innocently provocative, completely infuriating creature he now has to see every day. Despite the rumors, he's never been one for a workplace hookup. Blah blah blah. You probably know how it will end, but this is what we like, at least, you know, about some romantic books. You know what's gonna happen, but we'll read it anyways because we like the the story and the spiciness of the books. Um, okay, this one is from Sophie Kinzella. I have read a few of her books and I really like the way she writes. This is called Twenties Girl. Um, if you suddenly had a friend that only you could see or hear, what would you do? You could worry that your stressful life has dipped you over the edge and you have lost the plot big time. You could hide under the duvet, hoping that they would go away. Or you could have some fun. You could make your ex-boyfriend take you back. You could solve the mystery of the dragonfly necklace, make a fool of yourself many times, get your business back on its feet. You could dance with a gorgeous man who just can't resist you. And you could discover the best friend you ever had. And the last one from the romantic section is The Apartment by Danielle Steele. I loved the story. This is really about womanhood, relationships. Um, every single woman in this book has a different age. I really, really loved the, the story. This one was beautiful and it was taking place in New York, which makes you travel a little bit because I live in France. I really like the story. Um, they come together by chance in the heart of New York City. Four women at turning points in their lives, Claire finds the spacious loft apartment. But the aspiring shoe designer needs at least one roommate to manage the rent. She meets Abby, a writer trying to make it on her own, far from her successful life in LA. Then Morgan joins them. She's ambitious with a serious finance job on Wall Street. Finally, Sasha, a medical student. And so the apartment becomes a home to friends about to embark on a new accelerating adventures. And now let's move on to nonfiction and personal development. I have three books that all speak about a different topic. I have a huge one that I will share first and then I will share the other ones. So this one is called The Good Life. Um, other than romantic books, I really, really love everything that is psychology related, survivalism. It is based on the longest study that was ever made on happiness. And it is, I believe, still taking place. The Good Life and How to Leave It. Lessons from the world's longest study on happiness. This landmark book reveals the simple yet surprising truth. The stronger our relationships, the more likely we're to live happy, satisfying and overall healthier lives. Revealing the groundbreaking research behind the world's longest study on happiness, program director Dr. Robert Waldinger and Dr. Mark Schultz, Schultz? Schultz. <laughs> and Dr. Mark Schultz bring together scientific precision, traditional wisdom, incredible real life stories, and actionable insights to prove once and for all that our own well being and ability to flourish is absolutely within our control. Am I going to say that I'd read it in two days? Absolutely not. Uh, that will be kidding you guys. But I was reading a chapter every day 
that was feasible and then I was reading some kind of a romantic or funkier book because this is pure knowledge, you know, it's a study so it's for me it's longer, it takes longer to read but I have found a lot of good information, you have all the statistics you have some stories of people that were really in the study, they only changed their names and I learned a lot of things about happiness and how to live a better life. This is Becoming Bulletproof, Life Lessons from a Secret Service Agent. It's part memoir, part entertaining, part self-help manual. Uh, it was written by Evie Pompuras, I don't know how you pronounce her name, but um, it was easy to read. There were some tangible uh, examples of her career and she gives a lot of good tips on how to stay safe in this crazy world we live in. Um, in a world full of unknown and unpredictable perils, most of us have been taught that it's someone else's job to protect us and keep us safe. The one person you should be able to fully rely upon to save you is you. You are the hero you've been waiting for. Former Secret Service Special Agent Amy Pompuras. It's protect yourself, read people, influence situations, live fearlessly and become bulletproof. This one I purchased it on Amazon because it was not really available in France. Um, it took me a few weeks to read because again, usually when I do a uh, psychological or non-fiction book, I read one or two chapters every day and then I read a funky book, a romantic book or a thriller on the side. The last book is called The Seven Principles for Making a Marriage Work. It was written by a doctor in uh, relationships, John Gottman's Unprecedented I have tried seven times to pronounce this word. I still can't, sorry. Uh, okay. John Gottman's unprecedented study of couples over a period of years has allowed him to observe the habits that can make and break a marriage. He is the combination of that work. The seven principles that guide couples on a path towards a harmonious and long-lasting relationship. Straightforward yet profound, these principles teach partners new approaches for resolving conflicts, creating new common ground and achieving greater levels of intimacy. Gottman offers strategies and resources to help couples collaborate more effectively to resolve any problem, whether dealing with issues related to sex, money, religion, work, family or anything else. I am not married yet, I don't know if I ever will be, for me it is not a goal in life to be married, but I am currently in a long-term relationship. And when I picked up this book a few years ago, I, I said to myself, it doesn't matter for me if I'm married or not, I take my relationship as if I was married. It is a commitment and I think it is very important in life to, to keep knowledge flowing, to learn new things, how to communicate better with your partner. And this book gave me a really good insight on communication and things I could do better in my relationship with my partner. I do also think that could be a book you can read with your partner or your spouse. Um, I haven't, but I really love the book and I was uh, giving my partner some summaries from some passages of the book because I did really enjoy it. I read it, I think, three years ago and actually I might reread it in a few weeks because it is sometimes good to remember some things you have learned in the past and to do a little actualization of the situation and rethink um, how are things right now, what you can improve in your relationship. So I, I actually am going to read it. So this one was really good. So this is all of the books I wanted to share with you guys. If you're reading any of them, please let me know if you have ordered any or if you have read them, if you liked them and if you have any book recommendation, fiction, non-fiction or romantic, let me know. Especially thrillers and romantic books. I would love to have some, some new ones on my reading list. Um, and other than this, I would love to know if you have maybe two or three favorite books that you have ever read. I always like to ask this question to my friends because that way you see what has 
impacted people's life and I believe that books can truly impact people's life and make them live a better life, a more fulfilled life because we live in a world where everything we do is on social media, uh, is on TV, is behind a screen and I find a lot of joy in the morning waking up super early and reading my book for one hour. It is my time for myself where I either go to a different country with my mind or imagine things because as an adult you're way less creative than when you were a child and I find books a good way to bring a little bit back this creativity and imagining scenarios, imagining the characters. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and now I'm gonna go and feed myself and make some lunch and I'll see you soon guys. Salut!